Hi, my name is Mr. S and I'm from the Living Maths program. Now, exercising the body is very important, but we also feel that exercising the mind is just as important. The Living Maths program has been around for 30 years. We teach in some of the best schools in South Africa and around the world because we teach online in schools all over. And what we try to do is introduce problem solving, critical thinking skills, lateral thinking. We want to show students how to approach a problem, how to try and come up with different solutions. Sometimes there's one solution, sometimes there's no solution. And what we try to do is expose the students to different types of problem solving so that when it comes to the opportunity to use these problem solving skills, at least they've seen something similar before. It's not for marks, it's purely for the enjoyment of it. And of course, they are allowed to work together as a team if they want to in class. And we really want them just to have a positive experience with problem solving. And I thought that the best way to explain this would be to give you the type of problem that we would do in class. So all the students bring something to write with and write on, and they listen very carefully to the problem. And in this particular problem, we have a fruit factory. It is busy packaging fruit and sending them off to another country. And of course, this happens in South Africa. We export a lot of our fruit. And it just so happens that there are three different types of boxes that leave this factory. There are apple boxes, there are orange boxes, and there are mixed. And a mixed box is half apples, half oranges. So the factory knows that there have to be 100 fruit in each box. In this particular box, there should be 100 apples, there should be 100 oranges, and there should be 50 apples and 50 oranges. But here's the problem. The foreman who is in charge of putting all the labels on the boxes, he took a little bit of pain medication and it made him so drowsy that he put the wrong labels on each box. So whatever label you are seeing over here is incorrect. If it says apples, it's not the apples box. If it says oranges, it's not the orange box. And if it says mixed, it is not the mixed box. So the question is, if someone had to blindfold themselves, put their hand into the box and without feeling around, just pull one fruit out of any particular box, would they be able to correctly identify which labels should go on which box? So the question is generally asked, what is the fewest number of fruit we would need to pull out of the boxes to be guaranteed that, of course, that is the exact, or that label should go on a specific box? So let me give you an example. I know that if I pull out one orange here, it could be the orange box, but it could still also be the mixed box. We don't know. So let's say I pull out 49 oranges. Is it the orange box? Is it the mixed box? We still don't know. If I pull out a 50th orange, it still doesn't tell us if it's the orange box or the mixed. But if I pull out one more orange, then I know this is definitely the orange box. Make sense? So I know that I can correctly identify one of the boxes if I pull out 51 fruit. But what about the other two labels? So the question is, what is the fewest number of fruit I would need to pull out to correctly identify all three boxes 
And of course, these kinds of problems lead to discussion and debate. Are you thinking of an answer in your mind? Were you thinking of the answer three? Well, that is not correct. But nice try, though. Think about it. If you pulled out one from each box, well, we know this box could be orange or mixed. We know this box can be apples or mixed. And we know this box can either be apple or oranges. So if I pull out an orange from that box and I pull out an orange from that box, that tells me this is the orange box and this one has to be the mixed box because it can only be mixed or apples. And if I pull out an orange, then it means it has to be the mixed box. So already I can correctly identify two of the labels, which means I will automatically know the third. So if I had pulled out three fruit, I could have got all the labels. Is it possible to do it in less than three moves? Now you start to see where a problem like this becomes very interesting. Can you do it? Well, how do we solve a problem like this? That is where role playing comes in. What you would do is, and this is the solution, and it's quite a clever one, and you can try this at home. People will be amazed. If you take something out of the mixed box, let's say I pull out an orange, then this has to be the orange box. Because remember, it can't be mixed. It can only be apple or orange, so that has to be the orange box. But if this is the orange box, then that one cannot be the orange box, which means it has to be the mixed box. And if that is the mixed box, that one cannot be the mixed box. It has to be the apple box. Now, I know what you're going to say. Well, what happens if you did not pull an orange out of the mixed box? Well, let's do that. Sometimes you have to test your answer to see what would happen. If I pulled an apple out of the mix box, then it means that this is the apple box. This one can't be the apple box. It has to be the mix box. And if this one is the mix box, then this one can't be the mix box. It has to be the orange box. So literally by pulling out one fruit, we could determine all three correct labels. So how can you do this at home? You could put peanuts, raisins, and mixed in a box. Put the wrong labels on the boxes. Ask someone to pull one item out of the mixed label box, and you'll be able to correctly identify all the other three labels using this trick over here. And your family will be absolutely amazed. So these are the types of problems we like to look at. We explore things, we role play. We also play fun games, educational games, where we are trying to challenge their mind. And hopefully they come home with problems and they challenge you as well. So if you'd like to learn more about it, please feel free to visit livingmaths.com and you can look at physical classes, which is on top of the menu. We are involved with so many wonderful things. We bring astronauts out to South Africa. We're hopefully going to have one out in May. We have got some special guests that we'll be bringing around to some of the schools. We often run online events and programs for the students to take part. Uh, we have competitions and all these sorts of things. And most of these things are there to engage your your. Uh, child's mind and to make sure that they're thinking creatively and always on the ball. So if living math sounds like something that your child would be interested in, please feel free to visit livingmaths.com and you can sign up and we'll send you more information.